Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, my space. If you're new here, if this is the first time that we're meeting, I'm Natalie, spelled N-A-T-A-L-E-E. -E. I always knock on my cards to shake out the loose energy from the previous reading, and I am here to do your free psychic daily tarot reading. Okay, I usually do, if you're, if you're new, if this is our first meeting i never have my hair like that i'm, I'm doing it because i wanted it out of my face and i know that some of you golden oldies don't like when i mess with my look too much so um i usually do downloads first which are psychic channelings that i get sort of throughout the day or just kind of whenever and they're foreshadowing things to come and then i get into the psychic tunings which is when i sit down right before the reading and i focus and i tune in and, and get what i can get there while i shuffle the cards today's different because when i woke up i, I you know got out of bed and then after i took a couple steps on the floor there was a tarot card and it wasn't one of my um the radiant wise tarot cards it was a card from the lover's path tarot deck that i haven't used in a, quite a while that so i that card is the first card of our reading for today okay it's the justice card it's the justice card we have penelope and odysseus here so take a look at that let the visual vibrations wash over you my dears. Okay, then I, I got kind of ready and settled, started, started to do my day, getting into everything, putting my hair back, and under the desk, there were three more cards, but just three. I, I got the deck, the, okay, so it's just these four cards total that are out of order, or out of the deck. The three cards that are together are also the next three cards in your daily reading for today. So we have, they're, they're totally pre-picked, okay? They are Transformation, the Death card, Pluto, and is it Penelope? Persephone. It's per, Penelope and Persephone. So we have Pluto and Persephone. We have Penelope and Odysseus in the Justice card. And then we have the Ace of Coins followed by the Seven of Coins. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the Radiant Wise to dig in and clarify each of these energies. When I first saw this Justice card, this image is just not that typical Justice imagery, right? It's a woman at like a loom. Is, this, is that what it's called? Is that what it's called? Is it called a loom? <laughs> I think it is. Okay, so what is this okay this is the story of penelope and odysseus so penelope waits for 10 long years for odysseus to come back to her and while she's waiting she's taking the poppies and she's sort of pushing off other advances towards her because she's a she's a great catch she makes stuff she looms you know she's waiting for 10 years and over 10 years waiting forever there are other people trying to to get on get in on that penelope action so so she kind of she's very respectful and gracious in in that but but she waits okay so it's about delayed gratification they do there's a whole thing that happens but they do end up together again okay he comes back he comes back and gets her okay they live happily ever after and justice is served because justice is what boys and girls for my golden oldies yes justice is truth and love yes justice is love and truth yes that's correct so i what it feels like is there's a very powerful energy here this is the one who's waiting this is the penelope so so if, if you're the one, like the past two readings with the Shania Twain days, the Nine of Pentacles, if you're that independent person, you're, you're waiting for justice to be served. You're waiting for Odysseus, your Odysseus, to, to come back and claim you. And you're not wasting any time. You're looming. You're making stuff. And this is, this is about confident patience. This is what I said in a different in a different way but with this energy with this story with her at the loom it's not her being reunited with odysseus i'm just really that's another thing like with these cards out i really really tuned in psychically to these she's she's so she's not even looking out at the calm she's not looking out the windows she's not 
you know, it's 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 confident patience is what this is about. So I feel like someone here, the Penelope slash Nine of Pentacles person has really come into that, has really come into the confident patience that justice will be done, that justice will be done. And it's someone who has achieved that Nine of Pentacles from the past two days, guys. Some of you are moving really fast here, okay? Like growing really fast and it's really wonderful. Oh, they also brought me to Saturn and Neptune. I'll get to that in a minute. This is someone who's attained that detached viewpoint of, of, of looking into a troubling situation because listen, there's distance between you and your person if you're the Penelope in this situation. You have an Odysseus who's out, you know, I'm just kidding. And you're the one being very strong and stable and confident in your patience. And that's why you're able to go do things and go live your life. Like when I, you know, when Natalie says waiting, we don't mean sitting by the phone. We mean living life. Confident in our patience, okay? Someone here is able to have that detached viewpoint to see everything, like a little miniature, you know, diorama. And that's where that confidence and, the, and that stability comes from. So this is like the first card of the reading. So it, it's it's dominant over the rest of the reading. And it really is putting Penelope, this, this character, this archetype front and center. Okay. Moving on to the three down below, we have what's going on. We have the context, the rough context of the situation. Odysseus, the other person in the situation, is the one undergoing this incredible transformation okay this this is the death card in the tarot in the traditional tarot we have persephone and pluto and what i'm getting from this energy from the lover's path tarot deck this is okay so pluto went and kidnapped persephone brought her to the underworld and persephone's mother demeter was po'd and just made the whole earth barren and dry and said, Zeus, goddamn you son of a bitch, you bring my daughter back right now, or nothing is gonna fucking grow here. <laughs> okay. And so Zeus said, All right, listen, guys, Persephone, you go back with your mom. If you didn't eat anything when you were messing around in the underworld with big, sexy, scorpionic Pluto, okay? Well, turns out Persephone actually ate six little pomegranate, pomegranate. Is it pomegranate, pomegranate, uh, seeds. She ate six seeds, okay? She ate six little itty bitty seeds. So it mm, like little half in, half out, right? So Zeus decided that, all right, you know what? Let's be fair about this. You're gonna spend six months on earth, spring, and six months in the underworld, winter. Fair shake, fair shake, okay, shake hands. All right, so what it feels like, for your Odysseus is that they're going through this transformation, but they're half in and they're half out. They're sort of like, they're still in the underworld and they're trying to get to you, Penelope. They're trying to get to the justice. They're trying to hold on to their patience and their confidence and they're trying to, they're trying to keep that vision alive for their lives, for what they want, for what they want to achieve, for for life on the other side, it's really difficult for them because they're still in the underworld. So their environment is still giving them negative attention, trying to keep them down with, with all these little roadblocks and obstacles. Listen, what do, I used to say this all the time. You can get anything you want in life as long as you have strategy and you avoid the traps. Okay, what are the traps? There's a honey trap. There's a hot guy, totally bad for you trap. There's the ego trap. There's the vanity trap. There's the money trap. Okay, all kinds of traps. So it's about knowing who you are, knowing what you value, knowing your integrity. Okay, it's it's all about knowing thyself. It's all about self-knowledge here. And that's what this person is coming into. Remember, this person showed up. This is this is definitely a similar energy to the past couple of days. It's a diff it could be a different group, or it could be an evolution of the past two days. So you know, just by getting these vibrations of my voice and the visual geometry of my face and my flags and everything and any tarot reader, it's doing energy work. So for some of you, the past couple days, you're really riding the crest of this 
of this planetary energy. Oh, they also gave me Saturn and Neptune and I actually got shivers of what they were channeling. They brought my attention specifically to Saturn and Neptune. Saturn is the planet of structure, of making it real. When you get a promotion, when you break your back, when something real happens, it's Saturn. I mean, Saturn rules the bones. That's why I said breaking the back. But um, this is this is about the transformation taking place concretely. Now, we're not going to have Saturn and Neptune interacting quite this way in a significant way until the middle of the next decade. Oh, that's another thing they channeled to me. We're like eight or nine weeks out, something like that, from the end of a decade. There's eight or nine weeks left of the decade, and that's significant for someone out there, for some of you, okay? Only in the middle of the next decade will we be given this chance to make our dreams reality. Neptune is a planet of illusion, self-delusion, dreams, idealism, your highest vision for your life, your highest, highest vision for yourself, for who you want to be. This is the time when whatever you imagine, you can make it concrete, you can make it real, you can make it physical and tangible. And it's a rare opportunity because we're not going to have this encouraging, you know, very easy, not easy, but it's, it's facilitating auspicious energy to be able to take something from above like the magician and through desire bring it down into manifestation until the middle of the next decade. And that's going to be big for, for like humanity. Okay, so 2026 is going to reflect back on 2000, the end of 2019. Okay, so whatever you're trying to do now, whether you're thinking negative thoughts, that's going to be your reality and it's going to stick. That's, you're going to, you're creating, it's like you're building your house from the mind and then everything, all the lumber and all the nails puts itself together. So if your mind is building like a prison, then you're going to build yourself a prison. And if your mind is building a beautiful estate, you're going to have a beautiful estate. So this transformation that your Odysseus is going through is incredible. It's down to their soul. Okay, the angel of death, scorpionic energy. Scorpio rules emotional truth. Scorpio is all about authenticity. Scorpio doesn't settle for less. Scorpio doesn't settle for a superficial. They're like dead inside if they do. I've, oh, you don't, ugh. it's a very, just like an unsuccessful Capricorn who has yet to absorb full responsibility for their lives and their happiness and everything. Oh my God, it's so sad to see a little Scorp who's living in a lie. Oh my God, it's just, my heart goes out to, I mean, you guys know how I feel about Capricorns and Scorpios, but my heart goes out to Scorpios and basically anyone who's not achieving what their soul wants them to be in this lifetime, in this incarnation. We have the sun in Scorpio. We have Mercury retrograding in Scorpio. Okay, we have all of this scorpionic energy to facilitate this. So all you have to do is, is steer the energies and steer yourself. So someone here is definitely doing that. Someone here is definitely doing, uh, doing that. It's just difficult because they have to let go of the underworld. This is someone who was really invested in the previous structure. This is... Like, I know my way around the underworld. I do well here. People like me here. We got cookies on the dark side. You know, it's, it, it's someone who is trying to keep something or trying to hold on to something when they have to let go so that there's room to create. This is all about destruction, okay? This is all about destruction. So there could be someone who is still sort of not trying to save the towers, not trying to save things that are crumbling all around them, but it's the fear. It's the fear. It's the fear. This person is, they're, they're going through the transformation, which is painful enough. There's a fear of loss. There's a fear of change. There's a fear of loss from the change that they're going through. And they don't, they have to figure it out on their own. And it's like self-soothing. They have to tell themselves that, they're going to create life out of death, that whatever they lose, it's not anything you want, okay? They're just, they just don't know any different. They don't, they're, they're going through this transformation. They're in the big dark forest. They don't know what's around the next stump, okay? They're just sort of, they're, they're trusting, they're having faith, they're, they're, they're wanting a change. They do want the change. They do want it. They have Penelope in mind. 
these two are connected and what they showed me psychically tuning in before sitting down to do this reading is passing the ball. It's like these two are passing the ball back and forth. Like they're working together, they're working separately but together. This one is holding it down, confident patience. This one's doing their hard, really difficult work transforming themselves and and letting things go, letting things die, letting things that want to fall apart fall apart and, and really single-mindedly prioritizing what is really important to this person. Scorpio energy is all about emotional truth. This person is in this transformation of what that is, either figuring that out or replacing it with the lie. Maybe they were, you know, like that golden calf type thing. Maybe they were praising some sort of big thing that's actually meaningless. That's kind of a high place to fall. Something you really invested in you know, that, that turned out to be a sham or it just pales in comparison to what justice really is. You know, it's like they're, so, the, so this person's doing great. I feel like this person has fully achieved kind of like that high priestess status here where you're just so confident that nothing's going to, I really feel queen of pentacle, high priestess, just really solid, stable, secure energy here. Definitely doesn't have to be like a, an earth sign or anything. But I'm just feeling this person, this, look, look at her. She's just looming. She's just chilling. Okay, so just like, just like before, if you guys are the archetypes of these energies, then you're using it the right way. Or you're on the path to getting here. You're, you're, you're trying to do this work and you're trying to do this work, okay? So these are like the most potent manifestations of these energies, of these archetypes. You yourself and your situation could fall on a spectrum between, you know, if your person is Odysseus, if your person is Penelope, and, and how far you have to go but bef before you get to this kind of confidence. So maybe this is super insecure. This is like sort of secure sometimes, sort of insecure other times, and this is like super secure. So you know where you are on the on the spectrums of the, the tarot energies, okay? So this person's doing the work. They're doing their transformation. They just, uh, they're creating room is what they're showing me. They're creating room for the new. They're creating room in their lives, and it's a process. It's a process. I mean, this is like their whole life is changing, so friends, family, jobs, living spaces, vocation, career, like they're, it's not just you in this relationship, it's their whole life. They're, they're, they're redesigning themselves from the ground up. It's, it's the, it's truly Phoenix coming out of the ashes. It's a whole new animal. It's a transformation. So who they are, they're not going to be that by the time they get with you. By the time they get with you, they're going to already have transformed into a whole new animal caterpillar to butterfly it's a whole different beast here <laughs> i'm excited about it okay yeah this isn't like i'm putting on a new clothes i'm getting a new haircut this is metamorphosis from one entity one animal into a different freaking animal okay like who does that who goes through that we do on the inside from the inside out okay so that's that's how different it's going to be that's how far they're they've come that's how far they're going so bear down the hatches just have patience for this person okay now moving on we have the ace of coins and the seven of coins over here two coin cards two very solid stable material tangible energies here with the ace of coins this is the beginning of the new phase. So after this person, oh, it's painful. It's after they transform into this new, uh, they're going to feel good. They're going to feel real good. They're going to be nice and shiny and bright and everything. Okay, this is, this is when they finally let go of trying to hold on or any kind of, you know, fears or anything. Once they really are in this energy. And I feel like this is what they're keeping in mind. I feel like this is what that six months of spring, the six pomegranates, this is something that they're looking forward to this phase. They're, they're keeping this phase in the forefront of their mind because they know that it's waiting. They have faith. They have faith. And this is what's driving, helping drive this transformation, this transformative process. 
This is the wishes coming true, the attainment of the goal. This is complete contentment in personal life. Like emotionally, like I said, this person has a fear of loss from the change, but they're not losing anything. They're not losing anything. They, they just need to make room for receiving everything. Okay? They don't, they, they're, they're, they're imagining it, they're visualizing it, they're doing their, their manifestation work. It's going to pale in comparison to what it actually feels like when it's tangible, though. Okay? So this is why it's their test. It's their soul work because they have to go off of imagining. They have to go off of looking forward to this phase. And it's actually really lucky because when I did work like this, I didn't have a Pluto like I didn't have a relationship of I was about to walk. I was going blind. Okay, so some of us, this is someone who's doing this for a relationship, not for a relationship, but it's someone that has inspired. Someone has act. this person, this Penelope has acted as a catalyst for change. Okay, so this is the catalyst. Justice, real justice, real truth, real love has been the catalyst for change in this person's life so that they go through the transformation that they have to go through to shed all of the inauthenticity, to shed all of the lies, the deceit, the grime of life off of their skins. Good exfoliation, okay? This this is that this is that phase that they're looking for. And and it's okay, it's not a judgment. I'm not saying like I'm not okay, no judgments. Mercury's retrograding, so if if anything feels like prickly or anything, I never ever mean it that way. Okay. So the ace of pentacles is that seed. That's a seed that they are nurturing. They they have this idea and they have this visual in their mind and they're they're going and they're going and they're going and it's using it's fuel for this person to help encourage them. Like I said, you guys are passing the ball back and forth, like feeding each other energetic encouragement here, which is really lovely. It's really nice to have that. Some people, like I said, do it with no one. Some people do this with zero support, with no one rooting for them, with nothing waiting for them on the other side. No job, no relationship, no windfall. They're doing it because their souls can't take it anymore, living a lie. So they go forward into the darkness, not knowing, not affording to fear the loss from change. They just know they have to change. So for you, if you're if Pluto, if you are this person, if you're going through the transformation and you have a beautiful Penelope that you're making your way back towards, Let that love fuel you. Let that love be the engine. Let it be a powerful influence. I don't feel like you're downplaying it at all. I just wanted to say that for anyone, okay? And for all of you who've done this or, or who are doing this without an end in sight, without any stability in sight, without any person in sight or, or prize, you're doing this for yourself because you are the prize. Because at the very bare bones of this, taking away this justice of the relationship, taking away the next phase, you're doing this for yourself. That's the, that's, that's the most important thing is that you're doing this because you don't want to live a lie. You don't want to live without having justice for your own soul. That's, that's, that's the real forefront here, okay? Just to take it back to bare bones, okay? This is that, that beautiful phase of good fortune. This is after that. This is the reward for hard work done. We move into the seven of pentacles, which is interesting because I feel like these energies are all happening past, present, future. What I'm getting here with this lover's path energy, especially the way that they just like showed up to me and everything, I feel like this is just, you, you will plug this into your life and it will come right at the right moment, right when you need to hear these messages. Okay? So don't worry about past, present, future. Just just get the get these energies going. Okay. So the seven of coins, what this feels like is both of you passing the ball back to each other, nurturing the next phase. Nurturing the seed. Because all aces, 
just like any new relationship when you first start dating someone everyone's super you know people are a little insecure or you know they didn't text back right away or I haven't heard from them you know it's it's just a lot of room for misunderstanding a lot of room for oversensitivity and a lot of it's like a little sapling it's a little seed that when it starts to grow it's a weak little it's just a little itty bitty little it needs it's not a big oak tree it needs water it needs nutrients it needs miracle it means it needs it needs it needs, it needs stuff okay it needs encouragement it needs a lot in the beginning until it's strong enough to sustain you know storms so what you're doing here is you're both energetically nurturing this future phase this person penelope looming is looming that's cute that's funny i hope it is a loom because otherwise i'm just saying the wrong word like a million times in this video this is this penelope person nurturing this next phase of growth by being patient confidently taking care of whatever she's taking care of on her end and the transformation over here nurturing 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 this next phase of growth by investing into it by investing into it because the seven of pentacles they're looking into the tree they're waiting for the tree to bear fruit just like just like in the other one sort of it's waiting for the harvest it's waiting for the harvest of of in this case a relationship or a creative project or anything that you have put time and energy or okay there's no such thing as time there's only energy and attention and priorities so whatever you've been prioritizing whatever you've been putting into it's waiting for it to to come back to you but what i'm getting the strongest out of this energy is tending to your garden you're both tending to this garden you're both tending penelope's what is she thinking about when she's doing her stuff she's thinking about this she's thinking about i'm making this curtain <laughs> I'm making this tapestry when Odysseus comes back and we live together and he can look at it and he will think it's nice. You know, something like that. Like it's just like nothing's being wasted here. I'm getting two archetypes where they're just really smart and really self-advocating like Penelope is not doing this to make it easier for anyone else but herself Pluto is not doing this to make it easier for anyone else but himself like they're both still thinking about themselves and taking care of themselves but they're still nurturing and investing into this um this phase I know I've just kind of been playing with it okay so now we're going to get into clarifying these energies let's go ahead and clarify the justice oh i didn't even shuffle these cards okay well that's like the basic setup that's the basic of what's going on right now and right here you guys interesting interesting shuffling okay that feels good <laughs> okay what else do we need to know about justice that was quick two cards we have the Four of Cups and the Hanged Man. Aww. What a perfect complementary energy for, the, for this Justice card specifically for the Lover's Path. Here we have the Hanged Man. It's waiting. This person, Penelope, needed to have a whole 180 degree perspective shift on waiting and on... I was going to say justice, but they stopped me. No, it's waiting. Okay. <laughs> okay. So thank you for not letting me get all ahead of myself. No, this person had to have a complete 180 degree perspective shift on waiting. It's that detached viewpoint. It's, it's being able to, to, to get on with the living of life and letting everything else, you know, line up as it should in auspicious timing and and you know it's it's that confident patience so this is what this took for this person to be able to do that they had to they had to totally shift gears here it could have been think about it penelope was waiting for 10 years and she had so many suitors coming up knocking on her door i'm sure she had moments where she was like 
I'm waiting for somebody. You know, it's, it's like where it was hard for her to just keep believing in this dream, keep believing and seeing this new phase, this next phase. It's part of uh, this person's test, okay? It's part of this person's test to, to be able to change their mind. There's so much here. Both of these people had to change their mind to have the strength and the, the ability to be able to do that. Not everyone can change their mind, okay? So, so there's that hanged man. And what I'm getting from this four of cups, you guys. Okay, first of all, yes, it is. It's this high standards where Penelope, it's like, I don't, I don't want McDonald's. I'm holding out for like the steak dinner, okay? I hate that it's like a meat product expression, but you know what I'm trying to convey. Like why settle for fast food when you have filet mignon? You know, it, it's very much where she's like, no thanks, I'm waiting for someone. You know, it, it's the attitude is sort of, no one else is gonna be good enough for her. So she'd rather wait for this person's right there. This person's ready to pop, okay? And she, she knows that this is the one. She knows that this is it. She knows that this is justice. So while there, there could be little, you know, and that's what Penelope does in the 10 years. She, the story is like, she's, she's, sort, she's very gracious. She's sort of slyly where it's not like a harsh letdown, but it's a letdown, you know? So she's definitely doing that. So if you're the Pluto, if you're going through your transformation, you should know that yes, Penelope has many suitors. but she is waiting for Odysseus, Plutonian Odysseus. She's waiting for what she deserves because she knows that she deserves someone who can come out the other end of something like this. She knows Odysseus is going to come back and he does, okay? And you should know also that this person had the perspective shift that they needed to have. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> it's really perfect, it's funny. Okay, let's take a look at Pluto here. I know it's not like actually Pluto, but that's what I'm calling this person, Pluto. Let's take a look at the transformation. What else do we need to know about this transformation energy with Pluto and Persephone, please? What else do we need to know about the death card, essentially? It's a soulmate card. That's adorable. Aww. It's kind of funny to see this right next to such a like a card, you know, an energy. Like these two energies side by side, it's a little like, whoa. Uh, it's really sweet though. It's really sweet, but here's the thing. This person is holding on. It's, remember when I said they want to like hold on, they're like in the underworld and they're, there's someone around this person that is difficult for this person to let go of, that they know that they have to. And they're having a really hard time because this is either someone they knew from childhood or a past life connection or a different soulmate. And they could be, they could take on a different form. It could be a parent, a child, a brother, a sister, a best friend, an old friend, but someone's close to this person that they're having to let go of and it's really difficult. They're very nostalgic. And nostalgia is one of the ways that this person is able to be kept in the underworld, that people around this person will play on Pluto's sense of nostalgia. One for a good old time's sake when they're trying to stop drinking. Remember all the... For all the night, I, for all the nights from, from the edge. It's so funny. Okay. So if you are the, if you're going through the transformation, if you're going through this death energy, you got to know that there's someone around you who is not wanting you to transform into the beautiful butterfly. And they're actually keeping you in the underworld and they're doing it. They're leveraging their relationship with you. So Plutonian and they are playing on your nostalgia specifically they're playing on your they're playing on your goodness they're playing on your goodwill to keep you down to keep you in the underworld so 
And this is deep. This is very sweet energy. So it's difficult. This person doesn't want to have a boundary with this person. This person, Pluto doesn't want the boundary with this other person that they love. And I'm not really getting romantic. So if you're Penelope, I wouldn't worry about that. I'm just getting that there is a cord that has to be cut. There's a tie that has to be broken. And it's more about Pluto fearing this loss. They fear this loss from the change that they know is coming. So this is where they are right now. Whenever you're clicking into this reading, this is where they are right now. They're, they're sort of half in, half out. Half in winter, half in spring. Mentally and emotionally, they're with you, Penelope. They're in the phase and they're trying to make this the reality. They're taking the 5D and they're trying to bring it down into the 3D. In the 3D, in the physical reality, there's someone or some people around them that it's so hard to cut this cord. It's so hard to cut the bound, to put up the boundary. This could be, and that's why I say a parent, because, you know, fathers, but especially mothers, they know you in a way that, okay, how, how many years went by with zero boundaries between you and your parents or you and your mother who's changing your diaper? Like, they just know you so well. That is so frustrating to you. And I feel like it's someone that knows you that well. It doesn't have to be your mother, but someone that knows you that well. Who's your last little tether to the underworld that keeps drinking, drinking, drinking. I was going to say dragging, but drinking is a problem. There's alcoholism here. There is absolutely overindulgence in libations. When they can't put up a boundary with this person who knows them that well, they go and they drink because they don't have control. And that's such a sad place to be. That is such a powerless... That doesn't feel like this person's authenticity, that alcohol, the drinking, the coping mechanisms. It's part of what's on the out. It's part of what they're also afraid of losing. It's like Odysseus can't show up drunk to the loom fall over and break it, you know? <laughs> okay. So this person is, is, this is part of it. So it's part of changing some bad habits and it's part of those bad habits with people that was really fun. It was a good time. It was great having these, these, these wild nights, these drinking nights, or, you know, if this is a parent or family member, you know, so many good memories or so many, Maybe they started good, then they ended bad or whatever. But it's um, it's part of what they're fearing. They're fearing the loss. Now, let me tell you this. If you're the Plutonian person going through this transformation, you already know that this person isn't meant to see you on the other side if they're doing this in the first place. And it's part of one of the last tests, one of the last sheddings of the inauthenticity. Are you really going to stand up for authenticity? Because... There's someone around you that is leveraging this beautiful energy, beautiful energy. This is a soulmate card, past life connection. It's sweet. It's nurturing. It's, it's the gooey part of your inside. Someone's using it as leverage to keep you from growing, to keep you from living your highest ideal. This is the time to be who you are. This is the time to break out of that. You have Saturn and Neptune. The planet of structure with the planet of idealism combining forces to help you turn your dreams into reality. This person lives in the past. You're trying to, you have one foot in the future. You, you don't want to stay in the past with this person. Let's take a look at the Ace of Coins. Whoa. Oh, on the floor. Okay. Let's see if I can do this cleverly. Cleverly. Oh, four of swords. We have the ace of coins with the four of swords to clarify. Definitely everything I said before. Definitely you are both meditating meditating on this beautiful bright new future the next it's there no they're telling me the phase the next phase so this is ending a major 
phase or it's ending a phase of life for both of you. You're both using this as your escape too. This is the four of swords can be a, a rest. It's absolutely rest. This is like a good night's sleep too. After all this is said and done, you are both going to sleep so well. It's that good sleep, like that good, good, good quality sleep. It's really good sleep. It's a, ah, oh, you just wake up feeling so refreshed and then you can go out and do like a beautiful day. This is also a vacation energy. It's also meditation. It's prayer. It's calm. It's just restful, peaceful energy. So for both of you, this next phase is both of your daydreams you're both feeding this energy and it's part of how you are investing and tending to your garden that you're both finding rest and rejuvenation in thinking and feeling about this next phase of your life both of you just have to get through it whatever whatever obstacle whatever is right in front of you you're both dealing with it but in your mind and in your heart at the end of the day when you're just in bed or in the morning when you're just waking up you're thinking about the next phase you're telling yourself, okay, I have to do my day, but there's a, there's a day that there's a day where I'm going to wake up. It's going to be a whole different day. It's going to be this kind of a day. And then this is the escape. This is the, the mental and emotional and spiritual rejuvenation that's actually helping both of you move through what you need to move through. So for you over here, it's having a different perspective on on the on whatever the troubling situation is like whatever the cause is of your separation this is you needing to have a detached viewpoint and, and pulling back and having confident patience that justice will be done and it will for you over here it's creating room in your life for this to come in there's no room with this person who's leveraging this relationship with you what do you think they're going to do? With someone like Penelope coming into the picture, what do you think that's going to do with this person? What, how do you think they're going to react? They're going to be insecure. They're not going to show up as no six of cups. They're going to show up as some five of swords. Some They're going to show up super problematic for you. And you know that. It's like you're putting off cutting the cord and you like know you have to cut it. And you just, you know, you're fearing that loss. You're fearing a loss of this connection. But like I said, some of us have to go through this you're letting go of this toxic connection, someone who's leveraging your feelings against you for a connection with someone who could never do something like that to you. They have a detached viewpoint of this entire situation. They're loyally waiting. Penelope waited for 10 years for Odysseus. That's like a really freaking long time. Do you think she's going to wait 10 years so that when she gets with you, she can leverage your feelings again? No. She can do that with any of the people lining up around the block to be with her. Any of these other little cups being offered to her. No. This person has a lot riding, a lot invested into the strength and the connection of your partnership. If you are Plutonian, you know, the, the transformation death card over here. You have to, what you're learning is creating life out of death. So out of the death of this connection, first of all, it wasn't a quality connection. And I feel like that's something that you weren't able to let the truth change you and let, then you know, accept the truth until now, <sighs> until now, maybe it's because you have this new connection coming in. Okay. It's really going to sweep you up. This new phase, they're showing me and like the feeling of it. It's just like it gives you life. And you're really, I'm not going to say that you're not going to like miss it, miss this connection, whatever this is for you. It's more like you just didn't know how good life could be. So you just settled for the parents you had, the thing, the people you have, the people you grew up with. And you just didn't, and I'm really getting that you just didn't know different. You just, I, I feel like you either didn't think there was anything different or you didn't know there was anything different or you just sort of, mm, 
You didn't give anyone else a chance for some of you too. I know that it's sticking up. I like it like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and clarify the seven of coins, please. What do we have for the seven of coins? What else do we need to clarify? What else do we need to know about this tending to the garden energy? Is there anything? Whoa. ready I'm almost ready guys they're showing me Saturn and Neptune again what you do now will stick the choices that you make now will become your reality if you stay connected to the past if you live in the past your brain doesn't know the difference your brain doesn't know the difference if you're reliving a memory or if something's like happening to you in the moment your brain doesn't know the difference or if you refuse to have a perspective shift on waiting and you're just making yourself miserable waiting and waiting and waiting you if either of you drop the ball or both of you drop the ball by the middle of the next decade, much sooner than that, but you're not going to get, um, you're going to lose it. This is something that is still, like I said, this needs to be nurtured. This opportunity, this connection, this relationship, this, it's a dream right now. It's in, it's, it's, it's in the 5D. It's not being talked about. It's not it's it's not it's it's in good faith it's it needs nurturing and it needs watering and you're both doing that right now you're both meditating and praying for it and you know hoping it and and you know doing all of your energy work this is a very clear warning the seven of coins is the risk it's the investment it's the it's waiting for the harvest we don't know at this point if they're going to get it back or not you're both trying to tend to your garden and what the five of pentacles is, it's like the card I hate out of all the cards. Like I wish I could just rip it up and never see it ever again, but that's not reality. That's not like human experience. So what I'm feeling from the five of pentacles is that there is free will above all. There is definitely free will. I mean, I knew that we all knew that already. But if you don't tend to it, if you, if one or both of you drops the ball, Camelot is lost. It's hard because you have to do this separately. But you're thinking of each other. This could be someone you're talking to online or that you connected with on the internet through a website. Something where you know of each other, but you're not physically together is what this feels like. This feels like she's Penelope's waiting. I know I like to do this. I'm so, I just like that. Anyway, so you're gonna lose it all. It can all fall apart, okay? It can all fall, this can all fall apart. This person, if this person can't disconnect from this tie, this really deep tie to this person, they'll lose it. They won't, the, they, they drop the ball. If this person cannot be confident in their patience and have a perspective shift or if they allow someone else in that's not Odysseus because right now this is their this is them holding their standards and then having the perspective shift they have to be Penelope has to be careful not to accept anyone beneath her standards because this person after they go through this that's going to be a good catch let me tell you, that's going to be a good, you want that. You, that's a good catch. That's a good catch, okay? That's a, that's a very fine catch. But they're still sort of, you ate six pomegranate seeds. I want you six months out of the year. You know, it's still very like, they need to let that go. They need to be like, you know what? Take her, <laughs> Demeter. Take the damn girl. I don't want her in the underworld. 
I got a lot of friends anyway. You know, it's it's letting that go, saying, if this, if they weren't leveraging, if they weren't part of the past, they wouldn't be part of the past. But this person is literally living in the past. They're not living in the same reality that you are in. If you are this Pluto energy, the person that you're that you're needing to put the boundary up and cut ties with, they're living in the past. They're not even responding to you for who you are they're they're talking to you like you're a projection i don't know if you get that you might have gotten used to performing and behaving like their projection and just mistaken that for who you really are but it's not because scorpio and pluto everything going on right now is all about emotional truth and you're going to come up against that and it's going to even feel for some of you like did this person ever fucking love me or what I could do for them, or what I was for them, or what I meant for their life. I know it's going to be a head trip, and I'm so sorry. But if you can't disconnect, you lose the future. And you will stay in the past, in the underworld, with this sick person who's just... And it's not what you want anyway. Okay? This person, Penelope, you have to continue to decline. You need to, to continue to decline what is beneath your standards and you need to if you haven't already had this perspective shift have the perspective shift and maintain that confident patience and have that detached viewpoint about whatever the issue is here okay because this is a very clear warning that some of you will some will drop the ball and lose this connection not only that but they're going to lose their own self-development and I don't know what the other conditions will be in 2026 when Saturn and Neptune, it could be a worse manifestation of your worst fears coming true. Where in a few years from now, it gets even worse. I know, how can it get worse when if both of these people fail, if this person stays, it, it'll get worse. By the middle of the next decade, you're going to feel, you're going to hate yourself for failing at the end of 2019 when you had Saturn and Neptune helping you. This is an opportunity for you guys, okay? For both of you, for... Pluto and for Penelope, okay? I think you guys know what to do here. I think you guys know what to do here. So this is where I leave you. Interesting reading. Great, great read today, guys. Thank you for the energies, for sharing your beautiful energies with me. If you'd like to book me with a personal reading, go ahead and make a reservation in the description box below at theartigan.com slash tarot. Otherwise, I will see you guys in tomorrow's reading. All right, take care. I did it again. I didn't look at the bottom of the deck until after I stopped the reading. Okay, so check this out, you guys. We have the bottom of the deck. We have the Ace of Swords. Beneath the Ace, I usually look at the, the bottom three. We have the Three of Swords and the Devil. Okay, that's a big deal. <laughs> Not just because I'm a Capricorn and I love the Devil card. Okay, so the Ace of Swords, if you take a look at the pictogram, we have um, we have the hand emerging from the clouds. We have the Crown of Victory, which is what I love. I love how regal this feels, this Crown of Victory. And then if you look on either side of that crown, we have both the Olive Branch of Mercy and the Palm Branch of Severity hanging from it. Okay, this card actually symbolizes justice justice okay it's the sword of justice that comes down on each side on whatever side after the scales have been balanced okay this is about equilibrium this is about oh, justice is equilibrium justice about justice about justice is about the balance between severity and mercy it's that equilibrium where, where that where that exists where that take place that takes place which is why this person had to come to this equilibrium as far as how they approach waiting okay they're not waiting they're living life they have a detached viewpoint that's a, that's equilibrium that's real equanimity right there okay likewise this person has to balance this out for themselves regarding this attachment, this unhealthy codependent attachment that they have here. Because it's equilibrium. 
it's that balance between mercy and severity that maintains order. This, this is very unbalanced. This person is very unbalanced. They will stay unbalanced until this cord is cut. Whether they get with Penelope or not, that's why this, the card, the red flag card of all my cards came up because I'm like, <laughs> no, not that card, not the five of pentacles, you know, it's, it's, okay, that's why it's, and now I do feel like both of these people will have, let me put it this way, this is a lot of bravery, it's a lot of gumption, it's a lot of heroism, okay, Let's just say both of you got together before the end of this year or something or got together very soon and created a child, like an ace, right? That child would be of a heroic temperament if they were conceived. Ooh. If they were conceived right now at this time that you guys are overcoming all this stuff and getting together, it would be that the energy with this new beginning is very heroic. So think about that. I don't know if that could, that could be for somebody. Um, but this is power, okay? So you both have the power. This is like the championship victory. This is, this is actually a cut, um, what's that phrase? Dry cut? Cut and dry? It's clear cut. It's, it's, it's just the sword comes down on this side or comes down on this side. There's no in between. There's no a little bit pregnant, okay? It's just... It's you guys either win or you lose. Whatever side you're on, if you're Penelope or if you are Pluto, just take care of your side of the street. If your Penelope fails you, thank God you have yourself. If your Pluto fails you, thank God you have yourself. Because that's really what this is about here. The universe wants you to both get to a certain level before coming together. That's for sure. Okay. Now with the three of swords, this is everything that you're both overcoming. You're both overcoming pain and heartache and loss and betrayal. And I feel like there's something that even is connecting with this nostalgia right here. It's almost like you both bond over the same pain. It's like pain is what you two shared. It's like... You know, and then this one over here, this one is at risk of self-indulging in the pain and not able to create a new perspective for themselves or being so lonely and so in pain and missing Odysseus that she settles for less than what she really deserves. Okay, so there's going to be different, though, but those are all these little tests. Those are the traps. Those are the traps. I'm giving you the strategy so you can win. The universe wants you to win. Okay. And then, last but not least, we have the devil. <laughs> we have the devil card. This is about overcoming your lower animalistic passions. It's about not letting your addictions control you. Whatever you're addicted to, this is, this is so codependency right here. So Pluto is addicted to codependency here. This person is addicted and wanting and seeking out negative heartbreak, sad stuff. This person devolves this person in a, in a in a very deep way it's like like i said with the mom analogy this person knows you so well that they just know right where your soft spots are and it's like you want justice for yourself so that they never do that again and that they always get put in their place and that how dare they talk to you that way and i want them to treat me you are not going to force this person to treat you right i will tell you that right now no matter what you have to leave. You have to walk away. You cannot change another person's behavior with your own behavior. It's just the truth. That's just the truth. So once this person lets go of that idea, letting go of being caught in that codependent situation, that, that's what this person's real leverage is. Their real leverage is... The other person's investment in that nostalgia. That's why they leverage it. Because they know they can control this person with these two dark forces. Like, look at what's behind that, okay? It's just not... It's very deceptive. And just like over here, look at what's behind this. It's deceptive, okay? It's, they're traps, 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 traps. But the Ace of Swords is giving you guys this wonderful another wonderful energy to overcome 
to, to slay the beast, okay? Okay, I did bottom of the deck. But just remember that thing about equilibrium, about severity and mercy, okay? Severity and mercy in perfect equilibrium. You know, you don't have to be cruel to this person. You don't have to be cruel. You just need a boundary. You just need to really cut the cord in a, in a, in a meaningful way for yourself, okay? All right, that's where I leave you for real, for real. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.